What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 1940 movie The Invisible Man. This movie is directed by Joe May and uh, stars Vincent Price, Cedric Hardwick, Nan Gray, and John Sutton, and is a sequel to The Invisible Man, and in this movie, uh, Jeffrey Radcliffe is condemned for a murder he did not commit, and he goes to... Dr. Frank Griffin, who is like, I think he's like the brother of uh, the original Invisible Man from the first movie, and uh, he takes this serum that Griffin told him would drive him mad and stuff. He didn't really want to give it to him, but he wanted to help help him out and everything, so he, he take, uh, Jeffrey Radcliffe takes the serum and uh, everything, and he becomes invisible and starts to lose his mind, but uh, he's also trying to f uh, find a way to prove that he's innocent and stuff uh, and everything and uh, get Richard Cobb, the person who actually committed the murder, to be the one to have to uh, be condemned and stuff and clear his name. <coughs> yeah. This one was okay. I, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was really kind of disappointed with it. I felt like it could have been a lot better than it was. The first Invisible Man is one of my favorite out of these monster movies that I've been watching for the first time and everything is like probably my favorite out of the ones I've seen for the first time recently and everything so I was really looking forward to seeing the sequels and stuff and this one was okay the title is kind of misleading though because uh, it's called the Invisible Man Returns but it's not actually the Invisible Man from the first one so to me it's kind of misleading title um, it should have just been called the new Invisible Man or something like that, but uh, I think it's an okay movie though. It, it doesn't have that that uh, dark humor and stuff that the first one had. It's not as that Vincent Price is a great actor and everything, but this is not one of his best performances and stuff. Although when he does start going mad, he is really good and stuff, but he doesn't stay mad very long and everything. Like like this one is a completely. This, this character is a lot different than the other one, but when he, he does kind of have that little craziness going on, Vincent Price is excellent. In most of the movie, he's just pretty much a voice. You only kind of see him a little bit during the movie, but it does have some pretty good special effects and stuff, though. I will say that the, the, the visuals hold up pretty well, although I think the first one, they hold up even more and everything, but this one you could tell had a bigger budget and they were trying to go bigger with the special effects in this movie and in a way I think it it works really good but there are some parts where the, the visuals don't hold up very well um, but like I said I, I would rather bad practical effects than bad CGI any day so I'm not gonna complain too much on that and I, I think Vincent Price could have just been a lot better I, I think he would have been better suited for the one from the first movie if you want me to be honest where, he's a lot crazier and stuff not that the actor that played him in the first one wasn't perfect though because he was perfect in that role but it, it, I think he would have I think that Vincent Price would have fit that character better than this one if that makes sense but Catherine Hardwick is really good as Richard Cobb I think he does a, a pretty good job and uh, John Sutton is uh, Dr. Frank Griffin is pretty good too and Nana Gray is really good. I really liked her in this one. It's cool again to see her in another one of these monster movies because she was in Dracula's Daughter and everything. I think she was really good in this one too. But all of the cast in here were fine and it has some really great sets and stuff like you would expect from these monster movies. And for the most part, I, like I said, the visuals hold up and everything. But my biggest problems with this is the pacing. It's like really kind of slow paced and it just. With him not being crazy and stuff, the suspense isn't built up as well on this one as it is the other one. And everything like, I, I like that about the first one a lot more was like how suspenseful it was and uh, how crazy the Invisible Man got and everything. This one, he don't really peak that because he's more of a good guy and everything. But uh, uh, I think it was fine and everything. But it's definitely, you could tell this is one of Vincent Price's early roles, though. Like, he didn't feel like Vincent Price in this movie. Like, he, he was pl 
kind of playing the the a straight every man the straight man that's like like an every man type person which is kind of something different for him and stuff and everything but this was one of his first movies I, I think it when I looked it up it said this was like his fourth or fifth movie or something like so I think he did really good and everything I just think that I like later Vincent Price a lot more when he, he started doing the movies that he was more known for in the the later on in his career and stuff but he he is fine in here and this is a, a decent sequel but not a great one uh, so I'd say I'd give it a 6 out of 10 I, I did enjoy some of it I don't think it's total garbage or anything but I, I do feel it could have been a lot better than it was and everything so uh, but and it is a huge step down from the first one I like I said the first one though I I absolutely loved and I think I had myself a little too hyped for this one I shouldn't have expected so much out of it but as much as I love the first one I was really hoping this one would be better but it just it didn't quite live up to it it's good but could have been a lot better and everything so uh, but let me know in the comments what you think of the Invisible Man Returns and hope you enjoy this video and have a good day everybody